Hello and thank you for joining us for tonight's program. My name is Dao Kamara, the Community Engagement Coordinator for Provident Farm uh, Collective. And we are very thrilled tonight to be in a special conversation with our author and filmmaker, Natalie Wiesel, joining us with Alison Dighani, Buffalo Gold Grain, slash Urban Fruit and Veggie, with Mambiria. Yeah, you say more. Mambiria mm -hmm. from the Birodi mm -hmm. Farm. And uh, Hamadi Ali, our market manager from Provident Farm Collective, and me. Again, uh, this year we joined uh, the Western New York Land Conservancy uh, partner with Provident Farm Collective to save land and to grow fresh fruit that will be culturally relevant to our community. Now, Provident Farm Collective is a nonprofit organization that made land accessible to refugees, immigrants, and black farmers who are under resources of herding farm land. Again, we are in this capital campaign to make sure that uh, Provident Farm Collective can buy this land, create or endowment, and make sure that farm farmers can have a place called a home. Our community was able to raise about 700,000 towards this goal. And again, tonight we are looking forward to whoever wants to make this donation that will help us to own this land. We just want to say thank you tonight for joining us and we look forward to you. Again, you are welcome for joining us to tonight's program. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll just jump right in. Uh, my name is Natalie Bazil. I'm the author of, and we'll just improvise here, guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, before we turn this program over to Natalie and my fellow farmers, we would like to thank the sponsors who, made, who have made this uh, event possible. Uh, the Western New York Foundation, Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, Buffalo and Erie County Public Libraries, the, the Aurora Theater and Scott and Kathy uh, Beller, the bank, a wedding uh, venue and boutique hotel in East Aurora, Renee Bush and Bruce McComb, Key Bank Foundation, National Greed, Wegmans. And now I will turn it to Allison of Buffalo Gold Green. Yes, now it is our pleasure to introduce to you author and filmmaker Natalie Bazile. Natalie has a Master of Fine Arts in Afro-American Studies and a Master of Fine Arts. Her novel, Queen Sugar, was named one of the San Francisco Chronicle's Best Books of 2014 and nominated for an NAACP Image Award. It is now a critically acclaimed television series on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Natalie's most recent work will be among the subjects of tonight's conversation. The anthology is titled, We Are Each Other's Harvest. It is a collection of essays, poems, photographs, quotes, conversations, and first person stories that reveal the long, rich agricultural history of black farmers and their connection to the American land from emancipation to today. Welcome to Western New York, Natalie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, apologies for jumping the gun there. That's <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'd like to start by sharing a little bit of how I came to write We Are Each Other's Harvest. I really uh, started this book and, and started this project because I wanted to try to tell the story of black farmers in this country from emancipation to the present. And unlike Queen Sugar, which is a fictionalized version of a farming family, I really wanted uh, this book to be a platform for farmers so that they could really tell their own stories. I felt that it was very important for um, farmers to have a chance to speak for themselves, which is why I'm so happy to be here with the four of you today. It's been such a privilege to be in your company in the, last, uh, in the last day and a half and to hear your stories. 
And now hopefully we'll have a chance for you to share your stories with, uh, with our audience this evening. Um, so I'd like to take this opportunity to have each of you introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves and uh, the story of how you came to be associated with Providence Farm Collective. So Hamadi, why don't we start with you? Yes, uh, my name is Hamadi, Hamadi Ali. I'm originally from Somalia. I arrived in the States in 2004. And my history with PFC goes back to 2017. Uh, since our arrival, our elders were looking for farmland. And we have been looking for land for the longest, and we couldn't find anywhere or anybody to offer us somewhere to farm. And in 2017, with the help of Moore and Kristen, we started the Somali Bantu community farm in East Aurora. And I was the Somali Bantu board chair back then. And I worked until 2019, where I left the board. And uh, 2021, I got hired as the market manager for Providence Farm Collective. So that's me. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Mo, how about you? Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Mahmoud Mbera. And um, most of the people, they call me Mo. And I've been uh, born in Somalia and uh, grew up in Kenya. When I was Kenya, I was just 10 years ago. I mean, I was 10 years old and I uh, grew up in a refugee camp. Mm. And I came in 2006 in America, in Buffalo, New York. I never moved anywhere else except here in Buffalo. And um, uh, the way I engage with the PFC, um, I started, uh, Kristen, she was just come over helping us to our kid for the after school program. And uh, with the end of the year for the school, and uh, she asked me what kind of help you guys you needed so that I can help you. And I tell her that we need a land to farm. And uh, that's how it started in 2017. And I think I believe it was May, the end of May. That's how the farm started. After four years, uh, we create um, Providence Farm Collective because we have a lot of uh, refugee and immigrant who are willing to farm also. Mm. And also they cannot go with the name for the Small Event Community Organization. So we formed this name, Christian Shim formed this name, uh, Providence Farm Collective. Thus we get more people uh, started farming with us by 2020. Mm. Yes. Mm. And Dow, how about you? Um, again, I'm Dow Kamara. I'm uh, a leader from the Liberian community and a born farmer. Both my parents were all farmers. Mm. And I grew without nothing, just knowing anything about farm. And uh, out of a certain 13 years ago, there was a civil war in our country, and we all had to flee our country to go to the neighboring country. We got to the Africans, and uh, we spent 13 years in the Africans, just living on our hand out and food from the United Nations. We have no access to our land because we lost our land back home. In the neighboring country, they couldn't give us land. Even if we can have contract to get food, but we don't still have access to land the way we used to have land back home. And through the interview to come to the United States, we were told that we were going to live the American dream. Nothing was told about agriculture. So I felt that I lost my heritage. I lost my tradition. So all I knew, I was going to come here to own a car, own a house, to have a job and take care of my family. Nothing was like agriculture. And out of a sudden, we got this call through a testimony in the church. Our sister called Rachel and said, oh, we have, I have a testimony. We said, OK, Rachel, give you a testimony. And Rachel stood up in the church. He said, my testimony is we got a farm land and everybody and they want us to go and have a farm. That was the end of the church. The whole church went wild. Everybody <laughs> began to jubilate that, oh, we once more again going back on the farm to be a farmer. You're going to do to live our ways of life. And we get in contact with PFC. They call us to a meeting. We get to the meeting. We fill out the paperwork. They introduce the program to us. And we're very excited. 
and they gave, it a, they gave it a place to farm. But the first year, we were not successful. Although we came late, but we were not successful. But we're still determined that PFC could have a land that would be successful that we can come tomorrow you know, to live our life. And out of a sudden, PFC was able to farm the land on Orchard Park. And we all make the transition to Orchard Park. And last year, we grew tons of food that we never expected to grow. And some of the food was sold that brought income in, in, in family lives and they were able to turn life around. And our children were connected to our culture through this agriculture. Mm. And that's how we become part of PFC. And PFC now is the umbrella organization for all our refugee organizations who try to come together under this umbrella. Wow. So that's our story. Wow, that's an amazing, Thank just you. an amazing story. So I, will, I want to get into this a little bit more. I'd love for each of you to talk about uh, the resources and the support that you have uh, received um, and what PFC provides and why that's important. Uh, because farming is hard. And you know, you've know you all spoken uh, in the time that I've known you about, about land, for example. So I would love each of you to share a little bit about you know, what this partnership has has done to support the work that you're trying to do. So um, I'm Allison, Buffalo Go Green and Urban Fruits and Veggies, and we are urban farmers. However, we do farm at Providence Farm as well. Um, and this helps us because being an urban farmer, you don't have access to a large plot of land. So we're able to take one, two, or three crops and grow them in a large quantity at Providence Farm. So um, one of, so I'll just talk about how we got introduced to Providence Farm. Perfect. So um, <clears throat> several years ago, we were fortunate enough to receive a grant from General Mills and the United Way where we were able to purchase several greenhouses for our urban farm. And there were, uh, it was a community foods grant and so Providence Farm was also a recipient, and that's where I met Kristen. And we would see, in addition to financial support, they also gave technical assistance. So we would see each other at these meetings and these skill shares, and you know there were dinners and things that um, General Mills had for the recipients of the grant. And we kept saying, you know, we're going to call each other. We're going to get together. And, and, you know, months passed and months passed. And finally, we sat down together. And um, through, you know, really having that one-on-one -on -one time, we realized how aligned our values were, how our concerns for the food system, and um, some of the solutions that we had to improve the food system in western New York were very much aligned. So um, that was my introdu introduction to Providence Farm. But what Providence Farm does it, it, is that um, it gives you all the tools you need. And when I say tools, I mean actual tools like shovels and wheelbarrows and hand tools and soil and fertilizer and all the things that you need to be able to grow your crops, which is huge, especially for farmers who are just starting out. All of those things are very expensive. Um, you can, at the beginning of the season, the um, farm manager, Beth, she will ask you what you want to grow. She will purchase the seeds. She will start the seedlings. So when the weather breaks and we are past our first frost, our last frost, and we're ready to plant, we have everything we need. Mm -hmm. And can we, and, and I realize, Allison, I skipped over you with the, oh, with okay. the introduction, <laughs> but, but you have an interesting story, and I would love for you to share how you first got involved and how you first started Buffalo Grow Green. Because I had a, a chance to, to spend some time with you right. yesterday. Right. And so I'd love for you to just share your story also. So I have, a, um, I have an MBA in a history. My, my career was in insurance. So I have a corporate background. And I left corporate America at the end of 2013 to start Urban Fruits and Veggies and Buffalo Go Green. And we started just with our vacant city lots and we built our raised beds and then we got a mobile produce market and we got our first contract and our phone has like never stopped ringing ever since. So, um, and, and even though we're growers, our overarching mission is wellness and nutrition education in underserved communities. And what I always tell my wonderful friends <laughs> that have immigrated here is please, please, please don't adopt the Western diet. 
because they know better than a lot of folks in our country know that the food that we eat is not good. And so, you know, when they talk about their desperation for a place to grow their own food, I totally understand, even though I was not looking for that same thing. I understand why they would be looking for it coming here and, you know, and being introduced to what we call the Western diet, which mm -hmm. is not good. And a lot of um, folks that I've spoken with who have um, migrated to the country, they become ill quickly because the food is a shock to their system. So it's so great to know that these gentlemen are championing for their families and their communities and making sure that they can grow healthy, nutrient-dense, culturally appropriate food. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Hamadi, why don't you share a little bit about um, the resources and the support that uh, you've been able to uh, receive by being aligned uh, and working with PFC. What has that been like for you? Yes, as um, Allison alluded to, it's almost impossible if you're just going into farming on your own to have the capital to purchase the equipment, the tractor that we have at PFC, the shovels, uh, the irrigation system, the mm -hmm. fertilizer, the list goes on and on. It's almost impossible to afford that. But you get a farmer uh, who almost works at minimum a, a minimum wage job, comes to PFC, gets the support, they start their farm, they, they have the autonomy to grow whatever they want to grow. And at the end, uh, they get to keep the food or to earn an income from what they have grown. It is a very um, uh, encouraging to us. And also, the business aspect, most of, most of us, as Dow alluded to, we just come from farming background, not the technical or the business world of things. So you come here, you get to a business class, you are taught about book, uh, bookkeeping. Hey, this is, do this, do this, and you get your profit. And people are like, oh, wow, so I can do this and get this, huh? Mm -hmm. All of those things are very, very uh, encouraging and also propelling us forward to become better farmers and better business uh, people. Yeah, yeah. fantastic, so, mm. fantastic. Mo, how about you? Um, to me, for the resources we get from PFC, uh, not only me, all the farmers who are going there for farming. Um, if we see like uh, the classes we got it for, um, uh, for the business classes, especially for the incubator who are attending the classes, are uh, getting education for that and for the business farming and also people, they get all the tools they wanted, they get the land to be prepared all on time and uh, also get their seeds on time. So it's kind of like uh, it is for everything. And if I go back, I myself, I've been attending most of the workshop. Today, I can raise a chicken by my own without being getting any uh, resources for somewhere else except from PFC. Mm -hmm. I got the land, I can build my own uh, tractor chicken, and also I can bring the chicken, order the chicken, I can bring them over there it's just only because of the PFC. So I could not get all this resource without the PFC. So mm. today, I've been like, a, I can do everything on the farm. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. So it is very important to have a PFC. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Again, our PFC, as we call it, our umbrella organization, you know, umbrella gave us shade. Mm. And I think that's the shade that PFC brought to us. And I think the first resources we were actually proud of is the, land, the access to land. Because without land, nothing we can do with shovel, diggers, and all the stuff. Yeah. The land was our primary shape that PSC actually brought to us. Because we live in a city where we rent a house and we don't have access to the backyard. Mm -hmm. The land will not allow you to even plant at the backyard. You need permission. Really? Yes. Yeah. So for this reason, we don't even think about having a farm. And today we are called, I can have my own plot. Even the plot I have, I did not mow the plot. It was mowed by PSC. They had to put a bag on, how to put fertilizer on, have a tools to clean the grass. 
every necessary according to empowerment. That's the real empowerment. So that's what PS, that's the tools that give us, they empower us to be independent, to be self-sufficient for ourselves. Although we came to live the American dream, but now we understand that agriculture is part of the American dream. That's the resource that we got from POC. Definitely, definitely. That's, and I love that metaphor of the, the umbrella. You know, I mean, that's just the, such the perfect description of, of what PFC is able to, you know, provide. And, and, it, it, and it is all about empowerment. I mean, it was so spectacular to be first with Buffalo Grow Green yesterday and then to see your plot today and then to be with you three this morning. Um, anyway, it's just inspiring. But let's get on, <laughs> let's get on <laughs> to, to all these other questions. Uh, Mo, I would love for you to talk about the incubator program and what that's like. How does it work? And tell me about your, tell us about your incubator farm. Okay, um, I'll talk a little bit about the incubator. The incubator is because we have like a, a pre-program over there. We have a program for the community program and we have an incubator program. And also we have a demo for the PFC program, which is uh, helping the farmers to know how to farm and all those stuff. So if I talk about this program for um, uh, incubator, incubator is just a program for business. Uh, people are farming individual and who want to be like uh, in a business for farming. So uh, PFC do everything for them. And uh, do, we have a partner coming over, teachers teach uh, uh, our incubator how they can be manage their plot and how they could do for their business, for the marketing, selling their produce, and all those stuff. So if I talk about for my, uh, my incubator also, I'm also I'm an incubator farming, and a two program I have it over there, raising a chicken, and also I have a plot uh, for producing uh, uh, crops. So mine, I just uh, give a name we call Wedo uh, in Kizigua. Mm. So Wedo means like uh, something you are not expected. Mm -hmm. It just, just, just come over and uh, somebody give it to you and then you are not expected for that. So today, I wasn't expected uh, PFC they could do all those stuff. And I said, what kind of name can I give to know that it would be like it remind me all the time. And uh, my plot, I give them uh, Buedo. Mm -hmm. So that's what we call uh, my farm, called Buedo. And I farm over there and I get money. I have my kid who are going private school. Last year, I make a little bit of money for that. Pay my tuition for my kid. Wow. I support from there. Um, I wasn't able to get those money, but I get through to where I farm from there. Mm -hmm. And I'm expecting for this year also to get more money to pay more tuition for my kid for the school. Wow. So it is very important for me to be there and also keeping my plot as an incubator. Yeah. Like I say, back home, people, they used to have incubator, but people, they wasn't having enough meaning where the village are coming from. There is a, a people having an incubator. Uh, the government come over, do the irrigation, give you the cities and everything. By the end of the season, they have a percentage that they take it from you. Wow. But today here, we have an incubator, we're farming, we have income coming in, but a PFC does not take any percentage from it. Mm -hmm. It's just only helping you to put more money on you. Like last week, we were having a, a workshop for the market manager, uh, marketing, and uh, we do all the calculate the numbers we see it what PFC provided and each organization or each, uh, each uh, incubator, when we see the numbers, nobody could be afforded to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But PFC do it, all those stuff. So uh, it is very important for me to be there. And you know what I loved? Uh, so when I was out there with you gentlemen this morning, and I love the fact that even within that inc incubator, you, you could, there was space for you to imagine something bigger, yeah, right? Yeah. So you started and then you realized, oh, I could, I could actually do something with chickens, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and I, was, I just love that idea that PFC not only gave you the literal ground, 
right, mm -hmm. to work with mm -hmm. and to learn how to farm and right. to imagine what was possible. But then you had the space to, to dream a bigger dream. A bigger dream. You know? And that was just... Yeah, anyway, like, just uh, like the last that. year, I started with uh, raising the chicken or just only... Uh, well, it was a 75. So imagine this year I have a 400 uh, wow. chicken bed. So it's just only the space that I got it from PFC. Yeah. So who else do you think it could allow you to use his land? Like yes. Adal say that it's really hard in a city to have a, a land that to use it. Yeah. You know? So yeah. yeah. It's a real, it's a real. I know every farmer who's going to watch this is going to be like, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. <laughs> so Allison, um, you know, throughout the United States, we're experiencing a major transition in agriculture as many uh, older farmers are aging out of farming. Um, and there are fewer young farmers. And this is one of the things that, you know, I was trying to explore in We Are Each Other's Harvest is the, the new farmers who want desperately to farm. Um, what role do you think PFC could play in bringing farming back to the, nest, to the next generation in Western New York? What are you seeing? So I think it's a model. Um, and, you know, folks have been very intrigued by this model because um, it's very innovative. And uh, it can, it, every day, PFC proves how well it works. Um, and I think we do need more models like this yeah. because there are a lot of um, part of Black Farmers um, United New York State. And I was in the pilot community of Black Farmer Fund. And there are so many folks across the state who want to go into farming, but it's so, there are so many barriers to entry. If you do get access to land, all of the equipment and everything that you need, labor shortages, um, utility costs. So, um, and but the thing that's important is that PFC is able to get grant funding. So we need like the USDA and Ag and Markets and Farm Service Agency and all those agencies to recognize that we're going to be in trouble because we don't have growers. Mm -hmm. So if people in this country want to continue to have fresh fruits and vegetables that are grown locally, there's going to have to be a governmental investment in this industry to a large magnitude in order to be able to tell this story yeah. because this story will not, you will not be able to replicate this model without the financial wherewithal. So um, as farmers do age out and as, you know, this becomes a very, you know, a, a, it's always been a difficult industry as far as labor goes. But it can be, a, it can, there's so many beautiful aspects to this industry. Mm -hmm. um, and if that piece of land access and finances to get going and sustain farms is, um, if that struggle is taken away, yeah. then you see the beauty of the industry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I would imagine you could spend all of your time applying for grants. Oh my goodness, Or, yes. you know, raising money yes. and doing all of these things and not actually doing the work that you were called to do in the first place, which is to farm. and Yeah, and the, the <clears throat> more my business grows is the further and further away I get from the land. Yeah. So I'm always excited at the beginning of the season when I get to go and actually get things set up. But it, it is a business, and somebody has to run the business yeah. in order to be sustainable. Yeah, 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 amazing. Uh, Hamadi, I understand that last year PFC purchased produce from its farmers to distribute at food pantries on the east and west side, west sides of the city, and that this year PFC will start a farmer's market on the west side. So I would love you to uh, talk about that and what the aggregation of food for the food pantries program means to the Buffalo communities. Just tell us. <laughs> exactly, like you say, the east and west side of Buffalo. Yeah. Food appetite. It is almost in the open. You walk around, you can see it. Mm. And before... And can I ask, what does that look like? So for, for people who don't know this term, food apartheid, that. can you talk a little bit about that and, and, and how that manifests really in 
in East and West Buffalo. Yeah, the unfortunate incident that happened last month in Buffalo kind of exemplified that. Okay. You walk around the East and West side of Buffalo, you probably walk around a 10, 20 mile radius before you see a decent grocery store. Wow. Uh, the people that live there to access foods, I, well, when we f I first came to this country, I lived on a street called West Ferry. Hmm. Without a car or anything, the closest all this store was 10 miles away. Wow. Wow. Imagine it. And to this day, most recently there is a store, I'm not gonna mention the name, just uh, out of, <laughs> it is on Grand Street, you guys know what I'm talking about. It just opened like two, three years ago. Wow. And when you walk in, the produce there, it's no good. So yeah. that's what food yes. appetite is. And when I was delivering for the food banks, I walk in and I will see what it's in there. It's almost processed canned foods. That's what you mainly see. Mm -hmm. So taking fresh produce to these people, and I think I mentioned it earlier, I didn't know what tomatillos were, green tomatoes, or amaranth, or lenga lenga. But you see the communities, the joy they have when you deliver this food. They're like, oh, I can have this? Like, yeah, it's all for you. Mm. Yeah, take it. That was part of the customers. The farmers themselves getting a chance to earn an income. You aggregate their produce, and then at the end of the day, you write them a check. They earn an income. You see the joy in their face. Yeah. They're like, wow, this is all mine. I had a lady in McGinney, unfortunately, she, um, has, she's in Michigan right now, but she still has a hot plot at the farm. We wrote her a check one time and I was handing it to her and she looked me in the face. She said, I wouldn't make this back home. And if, <laughs> and if I did, they wouldn't give it to me. Wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> so yeah. it's the joy people get, yeah. you see. And for the farmer's market, the same thing. When I spoke to the farmers, they all said, hey, we're from the east and west side of Buffalo. There is a farmer's market not too far where our farmer's market is going to be, but the other farmer's market, I, it's, you walk in, it's an upscale farmer's market. Yeah. You know, it's not for the uh, poor folk, mm -hmm. you see. So it is a chance and opportunity for PF, uh, PFC farmers to sell their produce. And also it's an opportunity for the community to come and get fresh, healthy food. Yeah. And especially the underserved, communities, the newly arrived immigrants, and uh, Allison alluded to it, and I can attest to that. A lot of our elders have complained of so many ailments just because of the diet yeah. that they're taking. So with the help of, uh, of the support, well, with the support of PFC and all the well wishes, establishing the farmer's market on the west side, it is going to be a yeah. big thing yeah. for the community. Yeah. Yes. Well, and unfortunately, I think, you know, one of the, the things that the United States has unfortunately exported is poor, is a poor diet, you know? And so you hear about people in other parts of the world who want to eat like Westerners, and it ends up uh, having these adverse effects because, you know, unfortunately, we're yeah. too much salt, too much sugar, all the rest, not enough produce. So. Yeah, yeah. My, fam my mother's side of the family is from Trinidad, and I went back to Trinidad after not being there for several years in 2018, and I was just mortified to see chains of fast food restaurants. Mm -hmm. And in that year, the KFC in Trinidad, which is a teeny island, was the highest grossing KFC in the Caribbean. Wow. And it was really, really heartbreaking because I know when I would go there as a little girl, you know, you catch your fish right at the ocean and everybody has everything growing in their backyard and my brothers would climb mm -hmm. the trees for fruit. And it's like, you you looking to us for leadership and food, you are in trouble. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. yeah. And I also really appreciate, uh, Hamadi, what you said about, you know, so often you go to these farmer's markets. I know we have one in San Francisco that is so expensive you can't imagine shopping there. It's more of, of almost like a tourist attraction. 
And I really appreciate what you're saying about how important this farmer's market will be for the community because it's affordable, you know? So because, again, there's always this message that somehow, you know, regular folk don't deserve fresh produce, you know? And in, and in this case, even culturally relevant produce. Exactly. So that's, I'm, I'm very sad. I'm gonna have to come back <laughs> <laughs> for that. Um, Allison, um, your farm at Buffalo Grow Green and Urban Fruits and Veggies on the east side, um, and also you farm at PFC and Orchard Park. Tell us a little bit about your farm and what you hope to accomplish with it. Uh, what challenges do you face building an urban farm? And why did you choose to farm with PFC? We'll start there. So um, the challenges we face are land access. And you and I had an in-depth conversation yes. about that, so I won't um, repeat a lot of that. But we have very difficult time trying to get um, vacant lots in the city of Buffalo. So being able to have a space at PFC where, like everyone was saying, we're free to grow what we want to grow. You know, um, there's we come and we go and we harvest and we take what we grow here and put it together with what we grow in the city and deliver it to our fruits and vegetables prescription program clinics and our um, we provide to Nourish New York and the Urban League Food Pantry, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a whole market, a whole host of customers that rely on our fresh, locally grown produce. So having a space at PFC, just it just makes it easier for us. It just mm -hmm. gives us more land to, to do what we want to do for our community. Yeah. And can you also talk about um, how Buffalo Grow Green and, and PFC work together to build connections between black farmers and refugee communities here in Western New York. So um, Kristen, who's the executive director, Kristen and I spend a lot of time talking. We walk, we talk about it, we meet. And that is one of the goals. And because of systemic, um, you know, the separation from, um, from, from people from the African continent and a whole host of, um, you know, rumors and misinformation and miseducation, our communities are s severely splintered. Mm. Um, not only on the African continent, in the Caribbean, and African Americans. It's like there's absolutely no synergy for mm. us. And um, I think it's going to take a lot to, to build that bridge. However, I think this is a great step in that direction mm -hmm. because honestly I probably would have no connection to these gentlemen have mm. it, had it not been for PFC. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, we all, you know, a lot of us, we live in the city, but we really don't live together. Mm. We exist in the same space, but there's no real relationship. Mm. And um, it's, it's just because of not knowing not having opportunities to speak with each other, not knowing. Like, I'm so excited to hear that Mo, <laughs> his children, like, I want to ask him, oh, what school are your kids going to? Because my boys went to private school mm -hmm. also, and I know that tuition bill is like, woo. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so all the things that, you know, just like I wanted the best education for my children, so Mo wants the best education yeah. for his children. So there's so many similarities, but there's no platform for us to be together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's, again, this is a story, just something that I observed uh, this morning, you know, hearing you guys talk about, you know, your, because your farms at PFC are in close enough proximity to each other, you have a chance to, even within, you know, uh, your your communities hear different terms and different you know you can compare oh this is what I say in, in my language and oh it's what you say and I just I was so moved by that this morning because what I felt being uh, just walking with you guys and having you you know t show me your farms and and share your stories I felt a kinship with you and we just met this morning you know and and I really um, 
I'm so glad to hear that, that there is a space for people to come together, people who are really more uh, similar than they are different, you know, and to offer each other that support and that community is, um, it's inspiring to me. So I appreciate that. Okay, uh, let's get to Dow. Dow and Hwadi, can yes. you talk about the campaign that you're doing with Western uh, New York Land Conservancy to purchase far a farm in Orchard Park? What will it mean to the community to have a permanent location on which to farm? Okay. Um, again, uh, in my speech, I, I said that we were on this journey, and now we have a shade. Yeah. PSC is our shade. This is an organization that tried to bring hope back to us. And this campaign is very dearly to us because we need a protection, permanent protection. Yeah. We're tired of being moved from one end to another end. We need a home, a place where our children, our family, our community can come and have this connection, those cultural connection, where we can build this relationship that we need. We don't just want to farm and just go by our own. We want a place to call home that we all can share this different culture that we can know one another. And without this protection from that we're working with uh, the land conservancy, which is called the, uh, the composition easement, that protection will help us to know that this land is for us permanently. Yeah. This is where we want to live. This is the dream we want to achieve. But we cannot do it just from moving from one end to another end. That's what makes this campaign very, very important to us. We need, we need all the equipment, but really not, not now. Because even if you give me a tractor and they tell me to leave, what am I taking this tractor? Yeah. What am I taking these shovels? Yeah. I really need a place. That's why the campaign is dear to us. Mm. And whoever that is working on this campaign, we ask you to actually help us and support us in this campaign. Let us have a home, a place that we call home. Lord, redream our dream, our way of life. Yeah. And Lord, bring back the fresh food, the organic food that we grow back home, that we can produce it back into Western and New York too. And they can experience what we all used to experience. And we all feel as part of this community. As a new American, we are part of this community and we are ready to contribute to this community. Mm. Lovely, lovely. Mari, how about you? As uh, Dao alluded to or mentioned, uh, you know, uh, to own the land. Once you secure the tenancy of the land for perpetuity, we know we are going to be there. And nothing will move us, but if we're not able to own the land, then all of PFC's efforts goes in smoke. Yeah. So that also, right now we're not able to work all year round. We need to renovate the barn that we work in. You can only work five months out of the year. The, our wash station there, it's, it's almost packed. If you come in the weekend, you can barely find a spot. I think one wow. day you were there with me, you've seen it. <laughs> you can't find anywhere to, wow. yes, having the washing station renovated or build a new one, it getting a pavilion, having accessible bathrooms, mm. maybe having a kitchen, a commercial kitchen, where we can make value added products which will financially support and make uh, uh, sustain PFC's uh, finances. Mm -hmm. So all of those efforts, yeah, the capital campaign, I think we need to uh, you know, yeah. push it forward and yeah, yeah help us. Yes, and mm -hmm. uh, all these other programs, yeah. we and have the, uh, the community plot, the incubator farm. Farms. We need a community room mm -hmm. where we can have, see where we have lunch. Sometimes when it's, when it's windy, we have, we have to take our <laughs> guests in, yes, we don't know where to keep them, we have no office <laughs> space. It's just too much, but we, but we still have a shape over our head. Yes, That's our yes, hope. Yes, we have a shape yes, over our head. It's beginning. Yeah, we're beginning something. Yeah. So with this capital campaign, we we really pray for it, yeah. and we dream for it that it will come true, that we can have our own pavilion and how where our recipes can be on the wall. We can teach yeah. some recipes from our from our produce and things we produce from the farm, and that can be a one-stop shop for everyone to come to PFC. Yeah. 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 
And these are the same ideas expressed by the farmers. If you remember last time when we took a walk, the ladies that hey, we would like to make our own cultural mm. foods and mm. get that exposure in a kitchen that people come, get the food tasted. I think we had the program, but the kitchen still, no. <laughs> wow. So yeah, the, yeah. you work around the farm, people got all these ideas. Yeah. And, yes. Yeah. So we get the facilities going. And, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's such an amazing and inspiring model. I mean, already what you guys have done is inspiring. And, you know, when you're there, you can see the potential. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw that, like, the cold storage room exactly. that, that you're working on now. Mm -hmm. And just, of course you need that. And, mm -hmm. you know, all of these different things. So, yeah, it's really inspiring. Well, in, in the time that we have left, I would love to hear from each of you about your dream for PF, PFC, uh, for food production here in western New York. And where, where do you see this going in, in 10 years? And I'm going to add something to that. And also, when you think about each of your legacies, like what, would you, what impact would you like to have for your communities, for your farms going forward? So, Allison, we'll start with you. Yeah, say, what I'll say <laughs> to that is really my dream is what their dream would be because, mm -hmm. and I don't mean this as an outsider, but this is really, they really have made Providence Farm, the, the New Americans have made Providence Farm something spectacular. I kind of ride on their coattails. Mm. And so if they say we want to change this and we want it to look like this, I'm like, great. <laughs> you know, because we have our location, we're, you know, really urban farmers that dabble in rural farming. Mm. So, you know, what they want Providence Farm to look like, you know, I that's my dream for them. Owning the land, taking control of the leadership of Providence Farm, you know, their ideas, um, bringing all of them to fruition, how they want to leave this for their children or what their succession plan is. And I'm just here to help. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm here to, you know, with the market, what do you need help with? That's kind of the role I see myself growing, but also kind of being here for them and supporting their dream. Mm, lovely. What, what about you, Hamadi? Well, as the market's manager, now my primary goal is to help folks the incubator farmers, their communities, access markets mm. and sell their produce. And also uh, part of the incubator farmers, I've been talking to people more himself right here, a few others who are very, very aspiring farmers. Mm. They want to own larger plots. And so I've been talking to uh, Kristen and the folks at PFC, hey, what is next for these guys, yeah. you know, after they graduate from the three-year program, we have this guy saying, hey, he wants to have like five acres of land. Where can mm. we find land for him? Yeah. So I'm like, hey, this needs to be our five-year program. Also, myself, after coming at PFC, I've gathered all these ideas. I've never had a plan to go back to Africa. I've been in this country for 17 years. And mm. I, I was planning maybe once I turned 60 and exit the country and gone. <laughs> but <laughs> After coming to PFC this year, I was like, no, I'm going to go back home and start almost the same thing mm. so I can even help my folks back home. Wow. And guess what? I wasn't the only one. A guy right there almost had the same idea. I wow. met someone in the farm talking to have the same idea. Yeah. And it all comes from PFC. Yeah. Hey, if PFC could do incubator farming here, why can't we do it even in our own countries? Yeah. With the little money we get here, we can support other folks somewhere yes. else. So, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not too far what I'm to say, but I may add a little bit of things there. Um, what I need for PFC, added another program. We have a lot of immigrant and refugee who are coming in this country, they're new, and they cannot have an access to get the food that they wanted. Mm. So if we could have this program, like, uh, because like uh, the agency, they just bring people in this country, 
in three months they say, oh, this is your own, you can do whatever you want to do, do it in this country. In three months, you cannot learn everything in this country. I've been here for 16 now, but there's some other places even I don't know how to go there. Mm. But PFC, they could be like a, a DAO say that it is an umbrella. If it is an umbrella, they could be added this program by supporting other uh, agency who they could support the PFC that added this program. Like uh, the new American are coming here, supply some food for their home. Okay, this is what we have for you guys when they are new in this country. Yeah. So I think that would be my goal to see the PFC to do this. Mm -hmm. And also the, the whole organization to, to own it their own land for farming because there is a lot of people that would like to own it land and farming. Mm -hmm. So that would be great. Yeah, Fantastic. that's just my goal. Fantastic. Yeah, um, I think uh, my brothers have said it all. And uh, I think 10 years from now, uh, I want to see PFC sitting on the table with a refugee agency. And for them to know that immigrants and refugees have a voice. Definitely. Our voice is not just to resettle us and give us a house. We have a dream. Mm -hmm. And part of the American dream is agriculture. We are a new form within the new American uh, society. So PSG should sit as one of the organizations that, okay, not just DSS, not just give them a job. But they are a born and trained farmers that can actually make ends meet and be self-sufficient. And you can empower them through agriculture. That's my dream for PLC in 10 years to come. 10 years to come, I look at PLC to go international. We are trained today as PLC workers and taking the dream back to our country. Mm -hmm. And one day, PLC will be recognized as one of the armed organizations that feed us. And we're about, we about to feed our nation. Wow. We had the land. Yeah. But they are not making no use out of the land mm -hmm. because the technical know-how is not there. Mm -hmm. We only know how to make food, how to sell it, but we don't have the education. Mm -hmm. So we are trained today, especially my job as a committee engagement coordinator. I sleep every day how to connect our communities, the refugees community, to the American community, how we all can work together to build this relationship. Not who is white, who is black, but not look at the big picture. What can we do to provide sustainable and fresh food, quality one, cultural one within the society that we all live? And that's what I see PSC going. And I hope that's our dream and will come to pass. Thank you. Yeah, when, when I added something there, like uh, if we say back home, like uh, there is a lot of uh, resource, like uh, there is a land, there is a water there, but there's no enough education to educate the people mm. that are how to farm. Even if like, because right now when we see people, they just only expecting only for the rain that the time they start farming. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a lot of river going around of them, but they don't have all those uh, resources like, uh, uh, like uh, somebody could not even able to buy a pump, you know, doing some irrigation for his farm. But if we take all the resources, the education we got it from here, take him back home and then teaching the people, mm. they could be away with the hunger, you know, right away. Wow. You know, so all this resource, when you take over there, we teach them, they could get the resource by the pump, you know, showing how to cultivate the land and uh, buy some seeds in one time. Okay, this is what you can do it. Yeah. So it'd be easy and the people, they're not gonna be die with the hunger for that, yeah. Uh, and even though when the refugees are resettled, don't rush with canned food. Call PSC. <laughs> 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 hey, PSC. <PSU. laughs> we have seven refugees. We have ten families. Yeah. What do yeah. you think we can provide? Uh, yes. We got potato leaves. We got, we, we got yeah. corn. We got things. We can give them a real cultural, relevant food that they can feel that they're at yeah. home. Mm -hmm. That yeah. love the refugees. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what PSC is for. Yeah. So we got to take seat on the table. Yeah. 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 And I think that makes a good point. A lot of people expect a cultural shock in terms of the big culture, but food. Mm -hmm. People, the first time you arrive in this country, the next morning, if you came in at night, most folks come at night. Uh, yeah. and mm. You go in the home, you open the refrigerator, and you see 
canned food sitting in front of you. Like, mm. oh, what is this? Mm. <laughs> and unless you get a relative who have mm. been here longer and know yeah. what it is, some people sit. I've heard of their families that yeah. sat here for weeks in the mm -hmm. home without eating. Wow! Just because they didn't know how to open the canned food that they get. Yeah. Or whatever. So it, it is unfortunate, you know. Yeah. yeah, so like Dao say, hey, reach out to PFC. Yes, <laughs> we might yes. bring something familiar to you. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And new farmers are coming. Do you have some room for farmers? Puff. And they can, you can trust. The same three months money you gave them for March grain, it can be given for them for farming. Mm -hmm. And they can get a road there. They can get support. And then they can establish their life through right. farming. Yeah. Not everybody want to go to the factory. Trust mm -hmm. me. Not right. Mm -hmm. Right. And not, and, not and like your point about not everybody wants public assistance. And I think there's a a stigma that if you're coming from another country, you have no education, you have no skill set, and that's so not true. Right. Circumstances mm -hmm. presented themselves where folks who were educated may not be able to continue in those jobs. That doesn't mean they don't have a measure of intelligence. Mm -hmm. And when you just put someone at an office and say, here's a check and, and you know, without, like, like you said, oh, maybe take those funds and, you know, have some transferable skill. And I think that's another shock that I hear when I talk to new Americans. Mm -hmm. I didn't come here to get handouts. Mm -hmm. I came here for quality of life. And um, so, but our system works like that. Our system is about in, is about enabling people, not empowering people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that's another shock. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Well, I don't know. I, I'm just, again, so moved <laughs> by all of you. And uh, I just want to say thank you. You know, it's been a real, a, a real honor and a, and a pleasure to be with you all and to share this common, you know, commitment that we have to farming and to hear about your stories. Um, I continue to be inspired. So I just, I just want to say thank you. Thank it's been you, a real Natalie. Pleasure. It's, it's been, been a an pleasure. honor to meet you. You yeah. know, just watching Queen Sugar for all the years and never in my wildest dreams <laughs> did I think I would ever meet you. So. Thank you for your work. Thank you for shining a light on this industry. And um, yeah, you're so appreciated. Yeah. Doing what I can. <laughs> now, take and us home. Uh, tonight, I want to take this time to say thank you to everyone who actually joined us for this wonderful night with the wonderful course of uh, conversation. We appreciate taking time out of your business schedule to join us tonight. Uh, if you never register, you can do this, and uh, the video will be sent, the link will be sent to you. And we do really look forward to you for any support and any uh, uh, gift that you can send to PFC just to help us to have a home. And we look forward to that. And uh, we are in this campaign to raise $2.3 million just to have a home, to have access to our land that can be permanent to us and to fix our barn and have place for our children to come to have fun, at the same time to be culturally connected to whatever we are doing at PFC. So again, we just want to say thank you for taking up your time, and we look forward to building this relationship with you. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Fantastic.